Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ. In my last build series, I used this 16 gauge solid copper wire to make a custom eight and six pin PCIe cable for the graphics card. And I was asked how this differs from using standard stranded wire like this. So since my goal is always to teach you something new, I'm going to take this opportunity to share a few tips on working with solid copper wire. Now, I've already done a pretty extensive video series on rewiring a PC case where I went over all these tools and what the connectors are and how they work. If you haven't seen those, particularly part one, you can check them out here. This is more of a continuation of that series than a standalone tutorial. Call it part three. Okay. The first thing I want to do is show you the two types of wire I typically use when I custom cable a system. The first is your standard 16 gauge stranded copper wire. It's your basic wire used for practically all computer cables. It's just a bunch of thin copper strands inside a non-conductive insulator. The benefit here is that it's very flexible, which in some cases cannot be beneficial. Now this is the same 16 gauge wire, except instead of a bunch of copper strands, there's a single copper core. This is the same type of wire you find in almost every appliance in your home, your refrigerator, oven, dryer, microwave. One question I get a lot is, is there any difference in power delivery between these two wires? And the simple answer is no. Now, across longer distances and at much higher voltages, the solid wire is better wire. That's why there's a solid wire running through all your walls and in all the higher power appliances. But at the distances and voltages in a PC, it performs the same. The benefit of this, if you want to make a cable run that looks like that, it'll stay just like this. Now, the one big difference with using it in a PC is how the ATX pins connect. See, these pins are designed to work with stranded wire. So let me show you. You see when I make the crimp, that first set of wings crimps around those strands. And then the second set of wings crimps and bites into that insulation. Now remember this first set of wings is the main point of connection of the pin to the wire. The second set is just to stabilize the pin. So when it moves around, you don't start breaking the individual strands at the connection point here. Now, let's see what happens when I do the same thing on this solid copper wire. Okay, now you see the first set of wings crimps on the wire, but that second set of wings is just a crumpled mess because you see, on the stranded wire, when those wings bite into the installation, the copper strands inside can separate and make room for it. But here, that solid core doesn't allow the wings to bite in. So how do we solve this? Well, we have to mod the pin. It's a mod mod. I get these little tin cut snips 
or you can use your standard side cutters. And what I'm gonna do is just cut off Just this much. Of the end of the wing. But that's now just enough to let the wings bite into just the insulation and not deform against the solid copper core. So let's take a look. All right, now you see that first set of wings crimped into that solid core really nice. And the second set of wings just wrapped around and was just able to bite into the insulation without deforming around the wire. And remember the main connection is actually made by the first set of wings and those hold on pretty good. However, they too are designed to separate and grab onto those individual copper strands. So they don't work as well on the solid copper. So there is a bit more modding to do here, but in this case, the mod is to my tool. So what I've done is using this little grinding bit and my Dremel, I've rounded out the crimp channel on my ratchet and crimping tool. And you can see here, if you look at this channel, see this one is slight is flatter. And this one is slightly more rounded out. This is so when I crimp the pin on the solid round wire, the crimper doesn't flatten out the pin and the wire because when that happens, you don't get that nice crimp. It flattens out and doesn't hold on really well. Now, when I crimp the pin on, I get a nice solid crimp. Okay, so the pin is secured. The next thing about working with solid wire is that it can be tough to get it perfectly straight. You might get a bunch of these little wiggles in the wire as you work with it. So when I use solid copper wire, I sleeve it with small size sleeving. Now. I pretty much exclusively use MDPCX sleeving. It comes from Germany and I, I just like it. It comes in several diameter sizes and typically I use the extra small to sleeve 16 gauge wire. However, for the solid wire, I step up to the small diameter, which gives the wire a little extra wiggle room inside the sleeve and I can hide the imperfections so you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get it perfectly straight. Finally, because that first set of wings don't have those tiny strands to grab onto, this pin does have a greater potential to come off if you're not careful. So there are two ways to fix this. The first is you can just use a tiny bit of solder and solder the pin on. Or what I typically do is basically fuse it with the heat shrinkless method of attaching the sleeving, which just involves heating it longer than I typically would and melting it a bit further down than I typically would. So in this case, I'm not just using the heat shrink to melt the sleeving under it, but I'm also starting to melt the insulation under the sleeving and fusing the pin to that insulation. And then the sleeving becomes like a hard plastic shell fusing it all together. The key here is squishing it all together when it's still hot. And then before it cools, get that heat shrink off. And 
And that's it. Now, I, I don't recommend doing it like I just did with your bare fingers. They do make silicone thermal finger guards. I used to use them, but now I just have built-in callus finger guards. And that's pretty much it. The last tip I have is that you typically don't want to use the solid wire to do a full custom cable all the way to the power supply unless you have a nice unobstructed path. I usually just create the cable as an extension, which means the other end of the wire will get a male ATX pin and be installed in a female ATX housing. Then I can just plug my PSU cable into it like a standard extension cable. And that's it. Now, just like any custom cable job, I run each wire individually, starting with the inside wire and working my way out. Now, I do use these captive cable combs to help space and shape the wire as I run them, but now that I'm done, I could clip those off. However, I'm gonna leave them there because they can help in reshaping the wire if I ever have to remove this graphic card. So, I think that does it for this one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you learned something, that's why I do what I do. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. And again, the best way to support a small channel like mine is by subscribing and maybe checking out some of my other videos. So until next time, have a great week.